All right. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Elsa, and uh, I'm coming from Boston. We were here uh, at the Hack for Congress um, in a Boston event, so we came back to give you an update of what we've been working on uh, since then. So when was the last time you've watched a congressional hearing? Um, I'm a huge policy nerd, but I don't remember the last time I did. And when was the last time you participated in one? For most of us, I bet you haven't. But why not? That is the question that started all of this. We want to democratize access to congressional hearings so that no matter who you are, where you are, you can actually watch and participate anywhere, anytime. So the problem that we have at first is, well, citizens are really missing from these congressional hearings and these are important conversations. But since the hackathon, we've learned that the bigger problem is not just participation, but accessibility. Um, we actually asked a lot of users, um, where do they go find congressional hearings? And they said, well, C-SPAN. But our very wild well guess is only 12 people watch C-SPAN daily, whereas 85% of this country have internet. And if we go down to the age of 30, that's 98%. Now, in a day and age where participation and engagement are the same thing, Relying on this one-way streaming on TV is not the modern answer to participation. So that's all we've learned. But we also realize that there's actually, most of the hearings are actually live streamed online these days. But most people don't know where the links are, and it took us half an hour to even figure out where one of them is. So our job here is to put that in one place so that all the past, current, live, and future hearings can be accessible in one place. The second feedback we got from the judges is, how do we make this more easy to adopt for members of Congress who are very busy? Um, we realize the answer lies in the second problem that we try to solve, which is the rules. Now, the majority party, they have the ability as the committee chairs to set agenda and be able to um, shape the narrative on these hearings. And the minority party really have no voice. And so we actually found out a few years ago they tried to bypass it by asking citizens to submit comment through email, trying to bring in more perspective into it. So we actually approached ranking member staffers and asked them, well, would you use something like open hearing to actually share this with your constituents and bring more voices into it? Um, and we got a lot of great response. And so here's a hack. We want to provide open hearing as a way for congressional members, especially the minority party, to broadcast these hearings so that they can ask their own questions, bring in their own citizen witnesses, and be able to bring that voice into the conversation and empowering them. While we are nonpartisan, we think this could be the way to drive the other party to, to participate too, which means that at the end of the day, which is, um, right now there's a long tail of hearings they're never heard of, and only a few that are really the celebrity hearings that everybody pay attention to. If we get both parties to adopt open hearing and actually promote that, we can have the chance for citizens to go access these meetings really easily. So um, we put together an app, and if you have time to text hearing to this following number, or I can show you the app on the desktop. Um, so this is what you're going to see when you lock into open hearing. Um, these are all the hearings that are going on in Congress, and everything's live stream, but you don't have everything in one place. But now we put it in, all in one place, and these are some of the popular hearings that we found out. Um, and you can also go to live now which will be the current hearing that's going on. You can watch it. You can actually leave comments um, and have a discussion. The next step is to actually do lock-ins so that we can actually get more information about people who are accessing these meetings. Um, you can also submit questions. This is something we learned from a staffer who told us, you know, the minority party can submit questions for the record. Um, and they don't really have a really good way to access the questions that are coming from citizens. So citizens go up here. They can submit questions for upcoming meetings. Um, and citizens can also submit their own testimonies. Um, this is an example. This is not actually. Uh, but we actually ask some of the people to submit their stories. Um, so this is open hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from the judges? I have one. Uh, I'm sorry, did you focus solely on the, on the minority party? Uh, or did I just miss? The so that's the adoption strategy. Um, we realize that 
members of Congress are very busy, and if they have a new idea, you need to make sure that they have a huge pain point before they adopt it. And so when we talk to minority party, we get a lot more interest because they currently can't be setting the agenda or the witness list um, or shaping any public narrative around those meetings. And so they want a way to actually bring their own voices there. Um, so open hearing becomes this means for them outside of the hearing room to bring these meetings to their constituents and also add their own perspective to it. And so we think that if we get the minority party and the ranking members to use it and also submitting their own questions for the record, um, we can drive adoption by the majority party as well. So at the end of the day, it's regardless of party line, members of Congress can still have a voice in any meetings regardless of what committee or party they're in. So that's uh, the way we think about it. Yes. I think the side of this that creates a, a directory of hearings that you can go watch, I think that's great. I think the participation side, though, is, um, is way off. So the, the, the way that this tool might be used by the, by the minority party mm -hmm. is as a PR tool, as a weapon against the majority party. Right? It gives them a way to highlight uh, information that the press might find interesting and then use that as leverage to get more power. But the majority party has no interest in anything like this. And I think a way to capture that is when you said a, uh, a citizen witness. Mm -hmm. So I thought this was an interesting term because actually all the witnesses are citizen witnesses. They're all called on by Congress to come and testify. Uh, and I'm not sure that, that this creates anything new for the majority power party that already has that power to call any witness they want. So um, that's a really good question. And I think we don't know exactly the answer to that, but I think that if we can get one side to use a very different channel of broadcasting these meetings and the majority, speaking of very nonpartisan terms, the majority party, their only channel is through you know, these traditional channels, they might be incentivized to think about, well, you know, if the standard is raised, why am I doing it more interactively and do, through digital channels? Um, the next step we want to do is actually making these uh, citizen testimonies shareable on social media. And so that also creates this ownership of the public. And hopefully that also in create an incentive um, for both parties to be able to use that to engage better. Um, on the citizen testimony, we actually um, talk to a lot of people about what they think. And I think, um, yes, it's possible and true that they will use it as a PR tool. But it's also helpful, actually, that they, can, they are highlighting citizen testimonies and having the voices of citizens up there. Um, and th we think that's kind of a small opening we can aim at and being more practical about how do we introduce a tool to Congress um, instead of just idealistically saying, oh, everyone should use this. Um, but we really interview a lot of people and ask them about this. And there is a lot of interest in just being able to see more citizens' input um, in general. So. Good.